It is so much fun to customize and add to my home decor. Hello, May Flom here, and today I'm going to walk you through how the Scan and Cut is helping me to create a one-of-a-kind butterfly decor piece. To get started, you're going to want to collect a variety of materials. Now, I like papers, felt, vellum can be really nice. I've got a clear acetate sheet, really anything you want to make the layers. And then what you're gonna do is pick your design, in my case, a butterfly, and I'm perfectly happy with the butterfly already built in. Now, I'm not going to be needing the wing details or the antenna, I'm just going to be using the body of the butterfly, part A. Once I select this, I'm gonna say okay, and I'm not gonna size it here, I'm just gonna say okay. Now, you may notice there is a design on the background there. That's because I've been cutting out of different materials and testing them, and you can scan the matte so that you can see where your material is. And I point this out to you because it can be really useful when you want a certain part of the design on the paper or material to show. Now I happen to be cutting this time out of a little dot so it doesn't really matter where I cut on this material. It's all very small dot and all very the same. So off we go to cut and repeat with additional materials. Here you can see I've got some felt and some other paper type materials. When you are done, you're going to press finish, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go back, edit, object edit, and you're going to resize. So you're going to size up and down. Keep in mind these smaller butterflies are gonna be on the top, the larger ones are going to be on the bottom, and with the larger ones, only the edges of the wings are going to show. The middle is really not gonna show up. So you keep that in mind as you cut, and in this instance here, I am cutting on my clear plastic sheet. It's just kind of a medium craft plastic, works really well for this. It's going to add kind of a shimmer and a fun dimension to this project. And once everything is set, I again, I'm going to go ahead and cut and repeat this step for however many layers I want to have. And remember the auto blade will make it so that we do not have to measure or tell it where to cut. It's going to determine the cutting depth that it needs. With all of this cut out, I do also want to create a stencil for the background, and I want to use a very specific design. And to do that, I'm going to just go in and pick the design that I want. It's right here, kind of an arrow. And then I'm just going to set OK, and then I'm going to go into Edit. And I'm actually going to edit the size, but I'm also going to press the option. Oh, excuse me, I am going to change it 90 degrees because I want it going a different direction. And yes, I realize since I'm making a stencil, it could be any direction, but for me to visualize, I like it to be going in the direction that I want it to be in. So I'm pushed the, by pushing that button that is the little up and down arrow and side to side arrow, it means that I can independently alter both the height and the width of this arrow so that I can make it the exact size that I want. Then increase the number, I want 12, and zoom in and I will be able to manipulate and move. So by zooming way in, I can move the screen, but then also those top arrows will allow me to adjust the position of every item so that everything is nice and straight. Once we are good to go, we're going to cut it out. I'm cutting it out of a lime green cardstock that I have excess of because I like to use those kinds of excess materials to create stencils. As you can see, pop it all out. And there's our stencil ready to go, and we're ready to get painting and get some more materials going. So I'm setting my scan and cut aside, pulling out my shadow box. So I am working on a shadow box. You could work on a canvas board. You could work on lots of different materials for a project like this. You could even make a card. Because I have a real nice sturdy canvas shadow box here, what I'm doing to start with is deciding what direction I want my arrows and then starting at one of the corners and I have some blue acrylic paint and a paintbrush. And I'm just going to start painting in some of these arrow areas. Now, because of the material I'm working on, some of the paint is going to soak in a little more than if it was a non-porous surface. And that's just something to keep in mind that it might just take a little more paint than I'm used to. And I'm just going through with my paintbrush and stenciling in each part that I want to see painted blue. And then I can repeat with any additional colors that I would like to utilize. In this case, some yellow and also some pink. But my tip to you, wait until each color dries completely before starting with the next. Another tip, make sure 
you're lining up the stencil with the dry paint so that you know that it's in the right spot and the pattern is going to look cohesive. Now here I've got a foam brush. That is another option that is a very good option for you when you're doing this kind of stenciling. Sometimes a foam brush can be easier to work with or maybe you just prefer it. And do as much or as little as you like. And I'm also going to add a little bit of pink paint with that foam brush to the edges. I don't think the edges get seen once it goes in the box, but it's just kind of a fun little touch I like to do. Just kind of add a little, a few little funky imperfections that are intentional, just kind of a little shabby chic look there. With this done, we are ready to start assembling and working on our butterfly. So for the butterfly, I like to work on each layer if there's anything special I want to add. In this case, I'm adding some little hand stitched onto the felt. I will also add some dimensional accents onto some of the layers, such as little dots or little designs that I think would add to the project. I'm also gonna add some pink acrylic paint to the very edge of the clear, because this is going to really help it pop, help it stand out from the other layers. And let everything dry. Once this is all dry, we can get into assembly mode. You're going to want some liquid adhesive. Now you'll see in my process why I like liquid adhesive versus say a hot glue. I want that long dry time so that I can play with, work with, and adjust my project as I go. Starting with the largest layer, I've got ahead, gone ahead and got that glued down. And then I'm going to repeat with all of the additional layers. Now one thing I'll note is after I put this clear layer down, I'm actually going to use some some little decorative bottles to hold up the wings. That's just to keep everything where we want it to be. And th that's the only purpose that'll serve. Those two bottles you see on either side of the clear wings, those will go away as soon as everything is dry and in place. And that's not necessary. It's just because I'm so excited and want to keep working. In fact, I'm going to take these layers, these just these three small layers with the felt and stitch them to add an extra layer of security before I do any adhesive and I'm just going back and forth on these and the reason is felt sometimes can be tricky with liquid adhesive to really get it to stick and I want to make sure everything is sticking really well so I've gone ahead and prepped those and I've also noticed here that the wings the paper wings aren't sticking up the best so I've just got some craft foam just some random pieces there and I'm just cutting it at random using the scraps that I have putting some glue on, and then tucking it under the elements of the wing that I wish would stand up a little nicer. And that's just going to give it support and going to help it be a more dimensional project. So this could work on any of your layers. Now, once we've got that done, it is time to finish up the decorating here. And I am using some different fibers and again, some glue and using these to create the antenna and really add a little bit of funky fun I don't know, a little something different here to this project. And you can see I'm putting, there's a lot of glue that is wet on this project right now. So you're just going to want to keep that in mind. The plus side of this style is number one, it's flexible. Number two, the glue will dry invisible. The downside is you're going to have to wait and be patient because the glue will not be dry right away. Once this is all handled, the next step will be any other additional embellishments. If there's anything else you wanted, if you wanted any buttons or beads or sequins, or maybe you want to add some other layers or other items, this would be the time. In my case, I do want to add the word forever onto the actual frame. And I made that decision at this point in the project. I didn't know I was going to want that until now. So to do that, I'm just going in selecting and sizing and then cutting out of in this case just plain white cardstock is going to work just fine so here you can see and you can see my butterfly wings are just slightly larger and you can also see that i'm able to move things around we're in the frame and we're ready to finish this up and rock i wanted those wings to just slightly go over the edge of the frame and i love the size of those i think it looks so great i'm so excited to hang this on the wall so my next step will be placing my letter or placing my word, I should say, and I'm adding liquid adhesive and I'm taking a little extra time to coat this in liquid adhesive just to add a little bit of stabilization to the project, a little bit of stabilization to the word. Once I am all done with this, what I will do is then allow it to dry, of course, but also I think it would be fun to have little buttons all the way around the edge just to kind of bring a fun 
pastel look and adjust and just bring another just another level of detail to this project. I really love how this turned out. I think it's so much fun and there's so many different techniques and products being played within this. I hope that you have enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe to the Brother YouTube channel and of course stay tuned for lots more projects and ideas.